Welcome back to Tennis Anyone, Tennis Everyone. Today, we're going to work on going over two basic strokes so that when we meet down at the tennis courts, the goal is going to be for you and a partner to be able to spend a lot of time hitting back and forth with two basic strokes, the backhand and the forehand. Couple tips. You and your partner want to have shorts or pants with big pockets so that you can fit about six balls and your partner can fit about six balls. So that once you're hitting, when you miss a, a stroke, you pull a ball right out, keep hitting again. When it's time to pick up the balls, you do it all in one shot. Maybe you want to make a magic marker mark on the balls so that you don't mix them up with people in the next court. Again, when we meet, we're going to start off with me bouncing balls into your hitting zone so that you can comfortably hit the ball. You want to work on a nice circular motion you want to round that motion at the bottom so that as your racket enters the hitting zone all the way through to exiting the hitting zone, the racket face is parallel with the net. That way the ball lands inbounds on the other side of the net. This is true whether it's the forehand motion or the backhand motion. I'll demonstrate those with a racket. In the beginning, you'll be standing perpendicular to the net. Like that. The net is like this. As the racket face enters the hitting zone, think parallel with the net. Circular motion, flattened at the bottom, racket face parallel with the net. The backhand motion, similar, parallel with the net. Circular motion on top, parallel with the net. I say circular motion, meaning easy circular motion, because we're going to hit and hit and hit. Easy circular motion so that you don't overwork all the joints involved. You can do this in front of a mirror at home. This for the backhand. This for the forehand. Once we get on the courts, we can work on this a lot. You can work on this at home, in front of a mirror. Since we've got to the forehand and the backhand, once you and your partner can be hitting comfortably on the courts, using those two simple strokes, the next one it's going to be the overhead slash serve motion. I say overhead slash serve because they're basically the same motion. With a serve, you're just tossing a ball to the point where you can hit the best possible overhead. And when I say that, when you look at this, we want to be thinking a couple things. I don't know if I've mentioned yet, tennis is a game of angles, whether it's parallel, perpendicular. It's a game of angles. You want to reduce the angle that's created by tossing the ball up with your wrist. You want to minimize the wrist movement because then the ball goes in 
different angles that as you increase that direction, you create problems. Don't use a wrist motion throwing the ball up to serve it. Minimize the arm motion. The motion we want to think about is flexing the knees. That creates, that's one angle, straight up. Again, you can practice that in the mirror. You can practice that in your living room. Another point about that overhead serve motion is that it's just like you want to throw the ball up just high enough to catch it with your arm. That's the same, that's the motion that you're looking for, whether it's the serve or the overhead. I digressed a little bit on that. We're going to just go back to that forehand and backhand. Again, the forehand motion, nice circular motion. Get used to doing this a lot because we're going to do a lot of hitting. Circular motion, flattened at the bottom. So that if you hit it early or if you hit it late, it's going to end up going over the net and landing in bounds. Here's the forehand motion. Here's the backhand motion. Now, I'll see you on the courts. My name is Tom Faulkner. You can reach me at 267-9249 or fall54 at yahoo.com. I think I can arrange for that to be spelled out so you don't misspell my email address. See you on the courts. Thank you.